Shiva. Yes. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Yes. I have a gift for you. Oh no. Just look. Wow. Shiva speaks slowly. Hello. I'm Shiva and this is Jonathan. Welcome to the Matrixers. Yes. Extraterrestrial races are said to exist. The Yetis, reptilians. However, they are not located directly in the inner earth, but in underground bases. Yes, you have to imagine that the earth is very big and also has a thick layer of earth. The volcanoes all fit in easily. So an argument against the inner earth, for example, is that volcanoes exist. And then they say, yes, because volcanoes exist and everything below is full of magma, no inner earth can exist there. But it's nonsense. That would be like saying if a person has a pimple, there can't be anything underneath because there is a pimple. So that's how you can compare it. So the Earth's crust is very thick. So one assumes 1,200 kilometers and there the volcanoes have easily enough space and of course extraterrestrial bases also have space there. And then there should also be reptilians who have a base there. Greys should have bases there. And yes, there are quite a few bases, I assume. I mean, I would have seen a few on it is said that the inner Erdler live much, much older than we do. In the case of the inner worlders, it is assumed that they should somehow live to be 300 to 1000 years old. And that's supposed to be because there are no temperature differences there, no seasons, no cosmic radiation, which results in a longer lifespan. And of course they also feed on GMO-free, organically grown, very tasty fruit. And as far as I know, they don't have exhaust fumes or anything. Yes, exactly. Yes. As a result, they are easily 300 years old, up to 1,000 years. And there should also be one or two aliens who are even older. Yes, exactly. We'll come back to that later. The word Agartha comes from the Buddhist. And how then are Buddhism and the inner earth related? Yes. For example there is an access to the inner earth in Tibet and the Dalai Lama is always given a key. This key comes from a representative of the inner earth and is then passed on to the Dalai Lama. According to the motto, if there is an emergency or something, you can find refuge with us. Okay, exciting. And it's also guarded by monks. This entrance, they don't let anyone through there either. But there are many, many approaches all over the world. Shambhala is supposed to be under exactly. Shambhala is exactly our Tibet. And just as Telos is supposed to exist underground on Mount Shasta, the city of Telos, and there are just a lot of entrances. Lots of tunnels. On my clever piece of paper it still says that this is just behind a waterfall and the cave is 200 meters long. And there is said to be a secret entrance 1,200 kilometers long, guarded by monks, Tibetan ones. Yes, that's where it goes deep. But I think, the way I saw it, they have something like elevators there. Yes, okay. Because the 1,200 kilometers down through caves? Yes, I don't think that would be manageable. All right, exactly. Then we come to the Northern Lights. And hollow world theorists say that the Northern Lights are created by the central sun, and then make such a beautiful light here with us, namely the Northern Lights. That's exactly how I see it too. That the Northern Lights are emitted from the central sun through the opening in the inner earth. Exactly. 
and the central sun was just created by the Ariani, so to speak. So this is a kind of artificial sun, which consists of a kind of crystal, and which is then really dimmed at night and dazzles brighter during the day. So it's very interesting. Hello. Welcome to today's interview The Inner Earth. Exactly. I also wrote down something really clever about the Ramtha, who said about the Northern Lights. Namely, that the light, the Northern Lights, are visible in the night sky because the central sun reflects from the inside outwards. And the Northern Lights are caused by the fact that the light bounces off the crystals in the cold polar air, is reflected, and the crystal particles act as mirrors. Yes, that's exactly how I imagine it too. That would also be the best explanation for me, because the way the northern lights are explained, by the fact that they are caused by the sun's rays or that hit the earth's surface and produce these light phenomena. That doesn't always fit. No, exactly. So the last question. Have you ever had contact with the inner earth or to the inner earth, to the beings? That yes, even several times. So viewers know that we do out-of-body experiences from time to time and then I just went into the out-of-body state and concentrated on getting into the inner earth. It's not that easy, because there seems to be a kind of face control. They don't let everyone in either. And the first time I was there, I wasn't there long, maybe a few minutes, but then I could see the central sun. Well, everything has a slightly golden light, a bit like you might be familiar with photos from Africa. It always has a slight magenta tinge, but it was just a bit browner, a bit amber colored the light. And the beauty of it is, you really do have an incredible view inside the inner earth. Because with us it is the case that the surface is curved. That means we can't look too far. No, in the inner earth it is the other way round. There it is curved inwards. There it is called concave and there you can really see across the whole country. Improbably wide view. So much further than here. And that was the first time I was there. And then I was there once, and then I was invited. I was really picked up, so to speak, out of body. Then someone took me along and said, come on, I'll show you the inner earth, I'll call myself with you, you can take a look around. And then he really brought me to this hobbit village. So I say hobbit dwarf like that because I immediately associated it with it and there are little houses everywhere. So very simply built and in front of one of these houses was a very long table. The table was definitely 15 meters long, I don't know, a very long table and there were the most delicious dishes on it. For example, there was a piece of melon that was so big, a piece of melon, so big, was there on the plate. Then there were also many jars, lots of water and other fruit too, which were much, much bigger than here on the surface. And then he assigned me a chair and said, Jonathan is sitting here. But since I was astral, they couldn't perceive me. Okay. So I sat down on the chair and then someone came and wanted to sit on my chair and he said, No, no, that's where Jonathan is sitting. You mustn't sit on it now. Okay. And a few could see me. So two, three who were sitting at the table could not perceive. We were probably 15 to 20 people at the table. Yes. Well, it was quite a feast. Everything had a slightly medieval character. Yes, really just like the hobbits, they looked very simply knitted, had thick noses, knobby noses and also a fairly clear forehead and big ears. Well, they all looked a bit, I don't know how to put it, a bit bulky with them. Yes, 
That was a very interesting experience. Then I had telepathic contact with the inner earth again. That is, I lay in bed at night and had a meditation. And then during the meditation I suddenly noticed that someone was talking to me telepathically and I didn't notice. Oh yes. It all went through the left side of the brain. So the left side of the brain was somehow addressed, but at the same time I somehow couldn't hear what was being said. I went deeper into meditation and noticed that someone from the inner earth was communicating with my subconscious. And then I tried to figure out what it was all about. And then I only heard a few sentences and in the sentences they had just explained that the predators had somehow come thousands of years ago. And the predators sort of cleared everything here. And maybe it was millions of years, I don't know. They have the huge sequoias. They felled gigantic trees and just took them with them. They also had huge harvesting machines, which they used to go over the mountains and half sawed them off or harvested them, etc. Mm -hmm. You could say they plundered a lot here, like the pirates, and at that time the creatures that lived on the surface had to flee inwards. And that's how it came about, just as I noticed, that since then there have been inner worlders and outer worlders. There were certain people who still lived outside and lived inside and this split took place there. And even today this division is kept secret. All information about the inner earth is kept secret also from the public or in the press or something, because it is also clear, because if people noticed that another civilization lives in the inner earth, where one could go, they would yes, many. Are trying to get there. And I don't think that would be good for our economy, I suspect. And certainly not the inner earth either, yes, or maybe they could then also learn how the story really went. It didn't go the way we learned in school. So I think, in order to avoid such conflicts, it's just kept secret. Just like the stories about the UFOs. Sure, of, yes. Yes, then I would say, then that would be the interview for today, wouldn't it? Yes, it was a nice interview. Very informative, I hope. I hope for you too. And the second part continues. And then we do the interview with Sharula Dukes, so not with Sharula Dukes but from Sharula Dukes, and we'll pass on all the information that we were able to find out and collect. And yes, that's it for today with the Matrixers. Yes, enjoy ciao. Ja, viel Spaß. Ciao.